Hi, I'm Abdul Saad, clinical psychologist here at Vital Mind Psychology in Sydney, Australia. My website is vitalmind.com.au and you can also check me out on Facebook. Just search for Vital Mind Psychology. Uh, I come to you today with a, a new series of videos, this time focusing on the topic of depression. And what I hope to achieve in, uh, in this uh, video series is to give uh, viewers a deeper understanding of, of depression, what is depression from various theoretical perspectives. So I want to explore uh, various uh, theoretical orientations or perspective through which we can understand depression. And I would like to cover the psychoda psychodynamic slash uh, psychoanalytic view of depression. Uh, psychodynamic being a particular school within psychology that places a heavy emphasis upon our early life experiences, upon the role of the unconscious. Um, I also want to look at the cognitive behavioral theory of depression, uh, cognitive behavioral theory and therapy being another more modern school within psychology and its conceptualization of, of depression. And I also want to look at um, a more biological model of depression, uh, what's called the glutamate uh, theory of depression uh, or the um, sort of the inflammatory um, model of depression. Also, I want to do a separate video on that and perhaps also look at one other uh, model of depression, a biological model called the neurotrophic model or neurotrophic theory of depression. So what I hope to do in this video series is give you two, uh, I guess, psychological theories or frameworks within which we can understand depression and, and two biological or biochemical frameworks uh, through which we can understand depression. And hopefully in, in doing that, we can develop a richer understanding of depression and its, uh, the potentials for its treatment. <coughs> Excuse me. What I want to do in this um, initial video is just briefly uh, discuss what is depression and how do uh, we understand uh, depression. Now, the, the way that I'm looking at depression in, in, in this video series would be as a, 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 as a disorder, basically, as a, a persistent alteration uh, in one's mood and in one's capacity to function. And essentially, the way that I view depression is depression is a, is a persistent uh, negative mental state that is focused on the past, where the individual has a, an ongoing sense of loss regarding their past. There's a sense of um, hopelessness, whereas uh, it's, this is a very crude distinction, but in, in, in comparison with anxiety, anxiety is more focused on the future, a sense of uncertainty, the sense of dread, the sense of what if, whereas depression is more focused on the past and that sense of loss. But in this video, if we look at depression more through a clinical or symptomatic lens, there are a few, um, I guess, telltale signs and symptoms, which when they cluster together, give us more confidence as clinicians to say, well, it's more likely that you are suffering from depression, given that you, you have these signs and symptoms, and given that they do appear to be persistent. And this is typically the, the diagnostic criteria that are, that's sort of used worldwide by various um, clinical uh, groups, whether it's um, the North American, which is the DSM, or in Europe, the ICD, the ICD I'm not sure what, what level they're at now. I know the DSM's up to revision 5, ICD-10, maybe 11, the International Classification of Diseases. But essentially, all of these diagnostic systems agree that depression consists of the following signs and symptoms. And one of the ways that I like to remember these is through, a, uh, is through an acronym. Um, I don't know what it stands for, but it's been helpful since I learned it. And it's SIG ECAPS. Uh, SIG ECAPS. Um, so basically, with depression, the core feature is some ongoing uh, mood disturbance, lowered mood, feelings, you know, feeling blue. Uh, there, there's a, there's a, a depressed mood state in most cases and associated with that are symptoms of so S um, sleep disturbance so typically in depression we typically see reduced sleep but we can also get increased need for sleep or what's called hypersomnia especially in what's called atypical or non-typical depression uh, the I stands for interest so there's a reduced interest 
in previously enjoyed activities, the person is more withdrawn, the person does not get it, get as much or, or much pleasure from things. Uh, another, the technical term for this is anhedonia. The G stands for guilt, um, especially in more severe forms of depression. There can be persistent feelings of guilt, of pathological badness, I'm bad. There can be feelings of, of uh, punishment, that I'm being punished for something when the individual is in a depressive episode. E stands for energy, now depression, and, and we'll talk more about this when, we, when I talk about the, the biological or biochemical theories, but depression definitely leads to major alterations in energy. Um, and typically there's reduced energy in depression. This is a, a low energy state where the person is complaining of feeling fatigued, feeling listless, um, lacking drive. C stands for concentration, and this refers to the cognitive disturbances we view um, in depression. And again, th this will make more sense when I do talk about the biological theories. But what we see here is poor concentration, reduced short-term memory, trouble making decisions. It's also very typical in, in, in depression um, as a clinical syndrome or disorder. A stands for appetite. Typically, there's a reduction in appetite. Atypically, you can still be depressed and have increased appetite, especially in atypical depression where there's an increased desire for carbohydrates and, and, and sweets, especially nighttime binging in atypical depression. But generally, um, what we more typically find is a, a reduction in appetite and significant reduction in weight when someone is suffering from depression or major depression or clinical depression. The P uh, stands for, uh, the technical term is psychomotor retardation. What that means is basically the person is both cognitively and physically slowed down in depression. Um, some people might describe it like they're walking through molasses. There's a slowing down of both thinking and movement. In some cases, it, they, it can manifest as its opposite, known as psychomotor agitation, but um, the more slowed down state is much more common. And the last one stands for suicid suicidal thoughts. And in depression, this can, this can cover a broad spectrum. Um, an individual may have what's called passive suicidal thoughts, where they might say, look, I'm, I'm so hopelessly depressed. I, I wish I were not alive, um, but I'm not gonna take any active steps toward, of course, where we become more concerned, where the individual's level of hopelessness becomes so profound and their psychic pain so profound that they do indeed begin to uh, entertain the thought of ending their life or are actively planning or researching ways to end their life. So that basically captures the depression as a syndrome that we need all of these components to come together in an individual. We need them to be persistent. Uh, most diagnostic systems um, require that the person experience a number of these, um, uh, at least five of these, I think, in the DSM, uh, in order for the diagnosis of depression to be made. So it has to be continuous, um, unrelenting. So in a nutshell, these are the symptoms we're looking for. Now, what I want to do in the, in the next uh, video is look into one of the earliest um, schools within Western psychology, which is the psychodynamic school, which essentially was started by Sigmund Freud and then had its evolution um, after Freud uh, through Jung and what, what was called sort of um, neo-Freudian schools of thought, which focused more, focused less on repressed desires and more on our childhood experiences and our attachment. So in the next video, I'll be looking at what is the psychodynamic or psychoanalytic theory of depression. In the video after that, I'll be looking at the cognitive behavioral theory. And in the video after that, I'll be spending one or two videos looking at some of the more cutting edge biochemical or biological models of depression. Now, remember, if I can assist you in any way, um, I am uh, available for the online coaching. You'll find all the information about that on my website, um, vitalmind.com.au. And I look forward to seeing you next week with the video on the psychodynamic theory of depression. Take care. Catch you next week. God willing. Bye-bye.